everyone welcome to our channel mindful convo so for today the topic will be fitzgerald in moons building block model so this is a very famous model which is asked most frequently in apm exam at acca so you should be well versed with this topic so now we'll start with this topic for today so fitzgerald in moons building block model is an evolution of the balance score card so you can refer my balance score card model video if you want to uh, know more about this model so it's a i would say it's a more evaluated version of balance score card so it is developed to meet the needs of service organizations so the balance score card was not meant for the service organization it is more inclined towards service organization so it is a tool that helps management set up forward looking performance management framework that links an organization's strategy and objectives to employ targets and motivation so this model is linked with the targets and then the employees rewards and how they are getting those rewards by being motivated then in this model there are three parameters dimension standards and measures so one by one we will discuss each and every so the dimension it includes results and determinants so results are captured under financial performance and competitiveness and financial performance can be measured by calculating the profits and returns for shareholders so and competitiveness it is measured by calculating the market share and keeping a check upon whether we have lost the market share or whether we have gained it so till now we have covered competitiveness and financial performance so basically in dimension there are two uh, bifurcations the results and determinants so uh although there are six which i have mentioned here the competitiveness financial performance quality of service flexibility resource utilization and innovation so above two competitiveness and financial performance they have made it one which is result and other four are categorized into determinants so now after completing the competitiveness and financial performance part will come to determinants so i am repeating again about competitiveness means calculating the market share and financial performance is calculating the profits or keeping a watch upon returns for shareholders now in determinants there are quality of service or you can say it excellence flexibility resource utilization and innovation so the determinants refers to the areas upon which focus is to be made so that better results can be gained so regarding these four areas we can keep a check upon quality or excellence by providing on time deliveries to customers so it will lead to the increased customer satisfaction and it will also lead to providing them the quality services and customers loyalty then for flexibility it can be measured by the company's varied product range should meet the needs of different customer segments so there are different customer segments and if we are able to satisfy each and every customer from different segments it means we are flexible enough in providing the services so here we have discussed quality and flexibility so quality and flexibility go hand in hand so quality and flexibility should in turn drive positive results positive financial results so if quality and flexibility will be merged together they will generate huge revenue leading on to good financial results then if we talk about innovation so innovation it means introducing new processes with involvement of new technology 
and then measuring the revenue earned in last 12 months from those innovative products so innovation is introducing the new products and try to measure that how much you can take a range of 12 months let's say that in those 12 months so many products which you have innovated you can try to track the revenue gained from those products then the resource utilization so resource utilization is efficient use of staff leading to reduction in cost and improved profitability so if you will be utilizing your resources in a good way it will for sure lead to reduction in cost and also the profit will improve then other one is the i would say that the segment is standard so in standards it's ownership achievability and fairness so after an organization's dimensions are understood then standards can be set so in above segment we have set the dimensions or i would say we have tried to understand that what are the dimensions then we are setting the standards here so there are three aspects to consider in setting standards that who is responsible for achieving the standard which means ownership lies on whom after that what are the level of standards and are they achievable or not they should not be big so if there will be no correct ownership if we don't know who has to do this then no one will be going to do it so ownership is necessary then achievability the standards should be balanced should be in the limit they should not be like that way that they can't be achieved okay then third one is fairness so are these standards fair enough basis which we can appraise the employees or stuff so fairness is the important point here that these standards should be fair they should not be favoring any one category of employees they should be equal for each and every employee then after covering the standards part we'll move on to measures so in measures these are clarity motivation or contr- and controllability so you can take it as rewards so these three are categorized as measures or you can also say them rewards that by what will the measures for standards and dimension so by providing the good rewards we will be able to satisfy our dimensions and fulfill the standard so i would say the last part of this model which looks at the overall reward structure of the organization and it is linked to hr systems so rewards will always be linked to hr system so that there will be a formal line of communication so this part of model has three aspects so is the system understandable to all employees it means clarity that each and every employee should have the better clarity if they don't have the clarity they don't know how to perform and for what to perform because ultimately rewards matter so after that motivation so will the system drive employees to achieve their objectives and then controllability do employees have control over their areas of responsibility that whether they have the control whether they are uh, i would say that suppose you can take an example here of a ledger so uh, of uh, suppose you can take example here of cash ledger so the cash ledger is accessible to suppose a one person and it is not accessible to other person so if you provide the responsibility of anything related to cash ledger to some other person who doesn't have the controllability over it how will it be responsible so how will he be responsible for that so you should first see that whether the task you are assigning to a person comes under his power or not then if i sum up the rewards the reward system should be clearly understood by all employees these means that weight performance appraisal and bonus triggers so 
रिवॉर्ड शुड बी सफिशियंटली डिजायरेबल सो दैट एम्प्लॉयज आर मोटिवेटेड टू वर्क हार्ड टूवर्ड्स गेनिंग द रिवॉर्ड सो फाइनली इफ एम्प्लॉयज आर असिस्ट अगेंस्ट फैक्टर्स आउट ऑफ देयर कंट्रोल दे विल लूज इंटरेस्ट एज आई हैव सेड अबाउट द कैश लेजर एग्जाम्पल सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट दिस मॉडल सो इट इट वॉज अ वेरी क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस मॉडल यू हैव टू जस्ट अप्लाई दीज पॉइंट्स इन द exam in the acc exam and you will find that it's very easy to elaborate each and every point after taking this understanding you have to just link it with the case study and if you have the conceptual knowledge of the model it is not difficult to link it with the case study in fact on the question you will get some more matter to write and also you have some lines here which you can easily elaborate more and try to link with the company which ever is mentioned in the exams so in case if you have any doubt feel free to ping me in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe the channel and like the video so till then goodbye thank you